Hello there all, my name is Kate and welcome, welcome to this channel. Today we are visiting one of the most beautiful cities in Germany, Nuremberg. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you've been here for a while, double welcome to you. So we're in Bavaria. Nuremberg is the second largest city in Bavaria. For centuries was considered an unofficial capital of Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman, and the residence of German king. Centuries later became a center of industrial revolution in Germany. Sadly, during the World War II, bombing of Nuremberg turned city into ruins, which fortunately for us was quickly rebuilt. So today we're going to learn about top 10 sites worth visiting here in Nuremberg. After a short intro, we're going to start our journey. I really love the city. It's gorgeous. And in the morning, there's no one. There we go, the morning starts. So now a little bit about its history. Nuremberg, the modern-day capital of Franconia, a region in the northern Bavaria, is famous for its rich history and well-deserved titles of city of toys, gingerbread city and sausages city. With its 1,000-year history, had it all. Crusaders and capitalists, ghosts and pilgrims, burned witches and even marching Nazis something that the walls and the towers of the city remember and today we're going to cover it all well not all all <laughs> but a lot so in middle ages nuremberg was one of the most prosperous and famous german cities because the beginning of the history of the city considered the first written document about it for nuremberg it took place in 1015 at the time on the rocky cliff far far away well that depends on where you are but anyway Above the river Pegnitz, the castle fortress Nuremberg was built. It believed that the name of the city comes from the word Nur, which means stone cliff. Very favorable location that ensured prosperity of Nuremberg and fortress eventually became the residence of German kings. King Conrad II built royal court here, bringing the royalties here. At the beginning of the 12th century, uneasy times set in and the castle was in disarray because of the conflict between the Henrys, Henry IV and Henry V, not the most loving father and son relationships. After this mess in 12th century, King Conrad III had to rebuild and expand the castle, which he did, and that was completed in 1180 by Emperor Frederick I Barbarossa, who made his imperial residence here in Nuremberg, and that started Nuremberg's lucky streak. Now, one day in the 13th century, the importance of city began to grow and intensify, and among the obvious reasons, one of them was actually a religious one. Apparently, in the vicinity of Nuremberg, lived and died famous hermit Saint Sebald, in honor of him, first large church was built here, drawing a great number of pilgrims to the holy site, the earliest form of travel, I would say. At the beginning of 15th century, Emperor Sigismund issued a decree according to which imperial regalia would be kept in Nuremberg forever. Well, forever is a relative term as far as history is concerned. <laughs> forever meant in this case until the end of 18th century, when under the threat of the invasion of French, it was transported to Vienna. Overall, 15th and 16th centuries were good for Nuremberg. It continued to grow and prosper due to trade, crafts, and scientific development. It was all good until the beginning of 17th century, the one we all know, 30-year war began. Then it wasn't good for anyone, really. 18th and 19th century marked industrial boom <laughs> that Nuremberg took a full advantage of. Sadly, everything went downhill during the World War II, again for everyone, and during the bombing of 19. 45, the old town was completely destroyed, but luckily rebuilt 20 years later. You probably have heard about Nuremberg because of Nuremberg trials. Yes, Nuremberg was chosen as the site for war crimes tribunal known as Nuremberg trials that was post-World War II. Nuremberg, without a doubt, is one of my favorite cities in Germany and definitely one of the most beautiful cities. So without further ado, let's move to the top 10 sites of Nuremberg. 
And the first slide on our list, number one, Tugend and Fountain on Karolinenstrasse. I'm into both Stoicism and Buddhism, so no wonder that we're starting with virtue. <laughs> well, that's actually a fountain of virtue, a creation of Benedict Wurzelbauer, featuring six bronze figures of women, representing six main virtues. Faith, that's crucifixion, hope, anchor, love, mother with children, courage, lion, temperance, a ball of water, that's an interesting one, patience, a lamp, cubits are playing, trumpets are located above the group of women, and most importantly, Themis, Greek for order, goddess of wisdom and good counsel, also the interpreter of God's will, in other words, justice. So Themis crowns this composition. And number two on our list, Nuremberg Main Market. This stunning square is in fact a market square. At 6 a.m. when I was here, I saw farmers getting ready for the market. It's early in the morning, no one is in the city, and it's just beautiful. It's so lovely to wake up super early and then just enjoy the city to yourself. Here you will find two of the main city attractions, Kirche and the beautiful fountain, called Beautiful Fountain. The church was built here in the site of the destroyed synagogue during the Jewish pogrom in 1349. At one time was an imperial chapel where Charles IV, the king of Czech Republic, was baptized. Opposite of Kirche stands the Beautiful Fountain. That's the most famous fountain in Nuremberg, height of 19 meters. It was actually designed to be the top decoration of Kirche, but due to the heavy weight of the structure it couldn't be lifted that's why they decided to leave it on the ground. The date of the beginning of construction is 1385, the construction lasted 11 years. According to the idea of the creator, this masterpiece was reflecting the medieval value system. The fountain decorated with 46 stone figures representing ancient prophets, medieval electors, ancient heroes, scientists and thinkers, and on the lower level devils with grinning faces. Number three, Hospital of Holy Spirit was built in 1332, one of the oldest hospitals in Europe. One of the buildings of hospital was intended for treatment of lepers, an infection caused by slow-growing bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. You've probably seen movies about medieval ages, and if there you've seen people with skin lesions, usually quite decrepit with missing limbs, that was leprae. Uh, it affects nerves, skin, eyes, and the rest. Interestingly enough, it's still with us today, still found in Asia and Africa. Might take between nine months and 20 years for symptoms to show up. And if you do get it, it will take you two years of various antibiotics to get rid of it. So I would recommend washing your hands next time you're in Asia. And number four on our list, Imperial Castle of Nuremberg. This castle was seat of the German kings. It was built on rocky hill above Pagnitz River by order of Emperor Henry III. Construction began in the middle of 11th century and ended around 12th sometime in the 12th. The castle and the town were the favorite stopping places uh, for the rulers on their journeys through the realm and the court assemblies and imperial diets were held here regularly. Imperial diet meaning the highest representative assembly in the empire. Imperial diet was for Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman. <laughs> it was a deliberative body of the Holy Roman Empire, not the legislative one. In the late Middle Ages, Nuremberg ranked as the most distinguished, best located cities in the realm. That is why numerous imperial diets were held here. In 1356, notably, Emperor Charles IV named Nuremberg as the best place where every newly elected ruler had to hold his first imperial diet. Therefore, Nuremberg became one of the centers of the empire where kings held their first imperial diet. And number five on our list, explore Königstrasse and St. Lawrence site. So Nuremberg St. Lawrence site, named after the principal church, St. Lawrence, a gorgeous church that we're going to visit shortly, that lies in the section of the old town that is located on the south bank of the river Pagnitz. 
This is one of the busiest parts of the city and definitely worth exploring, especially for its beautiful Handwerke Hof Alt Nuremberg district that we are in right now. This really transports you to the medieval ages with uh, old half-timbered houses renowned for their craft workshops and pubs and restaurants and souvenir shops, so plenty of uh, things to do and see there. You will see it right after you get off the train. It's right next to the train station and you have to pass through it in order to get to the old town of Nuremberg, so you cannot really miss it. And right next to it here you would also see a gorgeous modern building that's a building of a museum. And to the fans of Renaissance, number six on our list, Albrecht Dürer's house. Pretty much right next to Nuremberg Castle, you'll find a perfectly preserved, wonderful and absolutely amazing medieval square, my personal favorite. And here you'll find a 15th century Albrecht Dürer's house. Here, famous German Renaissance artist lived from 1509 to 1528. He was a German painter, printmaker, and a theorist of German Renaissance. The five-story building dates back to 1420. Today the building serves as uh, Alfred Dürer's museum. Here you would find some of his best work and authentic period furniture and Dürer's studio workshop. The area itself is very pretty. I would recommend exploring the square and surrounding area and also checking out the famous sculpture, the rabbit. It was created in 1984 by German sculptor. The mutant rabbit was intended to remind us what will happen if we treat the riches of the planet lightly. And number seven, my favorite street in Nuremberg, Weisgebe Gasse, is one of the most beautiful streets here, along which there are historical buildings, including half-timbered houses. The street is also known as Dyer's Alley or Tenor's Lane. The length of the street is less than 200 meters. The name of the street comes from the white tenors who lived and worked here in the Middle Ages. There are more than 20 medieval artisan houses, and it is one of the largest architectural ensembles of the medieval times here in Nuremberg. And number eight on our list, St. Lawrence Church, overlooking Lawrence Platz, the spectacular twin-towered 14th century Gothic church of St. Lawrence, is the largest in the city and arguably the most beautiful. I loved it. In spite of seeing over hundreds if not thousands of gorgeous churches around the world, this one really impressed me, in particular its interior. When I was there, the sunlight shining inside felt simply divine. Inside you will see many lavish works of arts, most of them provided by the city's richer classes. One of the notable features include a unique three-part organ boasting over 12,000 pipes. That's one of the largest instruments of this kind in the world. There is a set of 16 bells, the oldest of which date back to 1300s. And your journey would certainly be incomplete without number nine, Nuremberg Bridges. I absolutely love 
bridges and in Nuremberg they're particularly beautiful. The most famous part of the Pegnitz River flows the historical center of the Nuremberg and divides the old town into two halves, the northern and the southern. The river is crossed by bridges that have been part of the urban landscape since the medieval ages. At first these were simple wooden bridges and pedestrian bridges which obviously frequently were flooded over and later were replaced by massive stone bridges as we read in 15th century. The most interesting bridges here include first of all that the Henker stack. In the Middle Ages the executor was the person with whom no one wanted to have anything to do with. So he reached his secluded house by a wooden walkway that we're standing on right now. You could call it executioner's bridge. Number 10 on our list, Nassau House is the only surviving residential tower in Nuremberg which was not completely destroyed during the World War II. One of the few examples of Romanesque architecture in the city, the building does look like a defensive structure, but there was only decorative significance here. The name Nassau has been used since 19th century based on erroneous reference to the King of Germany, Adolf Nassau. Actually, not much is known about original owner of the building. It was most likely the residence of royal administrators. And that would be all for today. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to put the like and see you soon.